Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm back with my Nvidia Shield Android TV. And I want to show you guys how to get Amiga up and running within RetroX. If you've ever messed around with an Amiga, you know it's a keyboard and a mouse setup. They did have controllers that you could plug in. Several different companies made them, but mainly it's a keyboard and mouse driven platform. RetroX tries its hardest to map the keys accordingly to most of the games, but there are games out there that require more buttons than RetroX can map. So if you head over to the RetroX website, I'm going to leave the link in the description, and at the end of this video, we'll head over there too. There's a tutorial on how to set that up. You have to make a config file for the controller or a key file. It's pretty simple to do, but right now, let's go ahead and get Amiga up and running. I'm going to start RetroX. So in this video, I'm going to go over some sound settings, some disk swapping, and some controller configurations, but we're going to have to move to the PC for that. On the RetroX website, it explains how to do it, and it's pretty simple to do, but right now, let's go ahead and get our games installed. All of the games that I'm going to be using are ADF files, very common for the Amiga. I'm going to press back, manage games, add a folder for one system, and I want to choose Commodore Amiga. Now I'm going to navigate to my USB stick, and then I'll find my Amiga folder. As you can see, I have four games in here. They are all ADF files. Select this folder, scan now. It very quickly just added my four new games. I have Battle Squadron, Putty Squad, Shadow of the Beast, and Lotus 2 Turbo Challenge. I'm going to press back and just pull up the Amiga by itself. I want to go over some sound settings with Lotus 2 Turbo Challenge. They were recently added to Retro X. Let's go ahead and launch this game. If this is your first time setting up Amiga, when we click play, it's going to have to download the Amiga emulator. Click OK, and we need to go down to Install. Done. Now we can play Amiga. So we're going to start Turbo Challenge 2. So if we look at the screen here, we can tell what button is going to do what. So we have mouse left for our L2, mouse right for our R2, F1, L1, F2, R1. Select is escape, start is enter, and so on and so on. Let's go ahead and press any button. Now RetroX tries its hardest to get this up and running like it should with the original Amiga. Remember that the Amiga used a keyboard and mouse combination. So we're going to press L2 here to skip these screens. So from here we'll just press fire and that would be my A button. So we're about to start the game but I want to show you some sound settings that were recently added to RetroX. We'll press start and select at the same time or our back and our play button on our shield controller. Sometimes I got to press it twice real fast and it comes up with the Retro X options. From here we have audio settings. As you can see there's a filter, Amiga Original Warm. We can turn that off with no filter, plain. So I'm going to turn it back on. Stereo separation, smooth. Original, medium, or smooth. I'm going to leave it on smooth here. But that's the new option built in so it tries to emulate the original Amiga sound as best as it can. Let's play this game for one sec here. I'll get right into it. I'm going to use my left analog stick to shift up. And we only got five gears in this one. So yeah, it's pretty awesome that we don't have to deal with UAE for ARM menu for games like this. There are some games that you will need to add some more buttons to and swap discs. So we're going to move to the disc swapping section now. I'm just going to back out of here. Quit. And back. So Shadow of the Beast is a two disc set. These are ADF files. I'm going to start it up. It's going to tell us our control configuration here. And I'll just press it so we can get ahead of here. A lot of these Amiga games take forever to load, so just be patient. So with Shadow of the Beast, we have to insert the second disc to play the game. The first disc was just to load something else up. Now we need to insert disc 2. Retro X is pretty awesome because it will find disc 2 as long as it's labeled correctly within your ROM folder. 
So what I'm going to do is press my start and select buttons. Swap disk. And it's going to put disk 2 in automatically for us. And we can now play Shadow of the Beast. Well, we still can't play it because this game is very drawn out in the beginning. There's going to be some text on screen. Then when we try to climb down a well, there's going to be more text. But the game is definitely worth trying out. Finally, we can now play. So this is a great game, and the parallax scrolling is amazing for an old Amiga. I love the grass. The way it's scrolling right now just looks so good for an old school game. And there's Chitulu right there. Ah! Yeah. So I've played the heck out of this on Game Gear. It is definitely not the same on Game Gear. If you want to experience this game, play it on Amiga. So that's how to swap discs. Now I'm going to back up. Now I want to show you how to resize the screen if it's not fitting correctly for you. We're going to test this with Putty Squad, so we'll start this game here. Again, remember your controls when you start up. So a lot of these old Amiga games weren't made for screens like we have nowadays. So sometimes you need to make the screen a little bigger or your play area a bit bigger. We'll press start and select. From here, we can scroll down to increase height, decrease height. So I'm going to increase it. 270 lines, I'm going to go back, increase it again. And now you can see we're at 200 lines, but it doesn't fit correctly. So if your games do start like this, just press your start and select button. Either decrease or increase till it looks correct to you. So I'm going to decrease the height. This looks perfect. I'll just get a little bit of gameplay going on. This game is actually pretty hard. But next up, I want to show you guys the website where he has the key mapper set up. So if you're not familiar with it, we'll go over it just a little bit. But everything you need to know is pretty much on the RetroX website. So I'm going to definitely direct you towards that. So many Amiga games require a keyboard for menu options. Now, something like Battle Squadron, just the stock configuration out of the box with RetroX isn't going to cut it, so you need to create a key config file. We're going to move over to the PC. I'm going to direct you towards the RetroX website and just explain a little bit about it. Let's move over there now. So I'm going to leave both of these links in the description. First up is the multi-disc support. I explained it a little bit in the video, but if you read through this, you're going to get a better feel for it. So I had two discs inside of my Amiga folder. I had the Shadow of the Beast disc 1 and Shadow of the Beast disc 2. When I went to swap the disc and it asked me to put in disc 2, RetroX automatically found the disc 2 in this ADF and used that for us. Read through this, it's going to explain it a lot better. Next up, button mappings. So this does get a little bit complicated, but he has everything you need to know here. The default configuration for Commodore Amiga is this. Up for the up key, down on your controller for key down, so on and so on. Now there was a few extra little keys that I needed with the Battle Squadron game. So what I did was I made a key map dot c o n f dot config file and i placed it with my battle squadron so if i open this up you can see tl is now key f3 tr is now key f4 my x button is now key f5 now it does get a little complicated but once you get the hang of it it should be easy breezy Hopefully in the future, he will add a GUI interface to map your controller within RetroX for Amiga, and I'm sure he's going to be working on that. It's just one guy working on this, and he's doing a great job. So props to him, because I've been using RetroX on my NVIDIA Shield for a long time now, and I totally uninstalled everything except for Dolphin and RetroX. These are the only two emulators I have on my Shield right now, along with Netflix and Amazon Video. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe for more great content. If you're interested in RetroX, I'll leave links down below. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll see what I can do. Like always, thanks for watching.